Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Your eyes can't hit, but your eyes can't see. What is going on guys, Will here. Welcome to the video. Today, January 17th, would be the 79th birthday of the greatest of all time, Cassius Clay Muhammad Ali, a man whose achievements in the ring were only part of a massive legacy. Actor, author, poet, lyricist, activist, philanthropist, he seemingly did it all, and in today's video, we're gonna explore as much as we can in this birthday tribute, so let's get into the video. Can one of these guys let the sun rise first? I don't think so. So Muhammad Ali would wake up every single day at 4.30 a.m. Why? I know not. But he would get up, shower, and pray. So he would strive to pray five times a day to abide by his Islamic faith, but usually he would average around twice a day. But before he prayed, he would go and shower so he's clean from head to toe. So I'll probably need something a lot more powerful than soap to wash off all my sins. I'll figure that out. And then I'm gonna go and pray and get on with the day. All right guys, so it is 5.30 a.m. and we are outside about to go for a six mile run that he would do in around 40 minutes. So Muhammad Ali loved to run. It was a core part of his training. He loved to run so much that he would oftentimes choose it over public transportation. And uh, having running as such a big part of his training, as a heavyweight, he was known for his endurance and stamina to last all 15 rounds, which is pretty impressive because he's like 50 pounds on me and I can barely make it through one. So we're gonna see how it goes. And then for the run, he liked to wear heavy boots for some extra leg work. And you know, it's terrible for the knees, but, although I've done a lot worse, so I'll shut up. Forty years old is a day, and you don't belong in the ring with Cassius Clay. I'm the prettiest sight in the ring today. That's my label. I have wrestled with an alligator. I done tussled with a whale. I done handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. That's bad. Only last week, I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. Can I get a medium dark roast black, please? See, the one thing about coming this early in the morning to St. Warden is that all the donuts are freshly glazed. Like, look at this, baby. Oh my God. That was probably the most uncomfortable run of my life because of the, the heavy boots. It's really hard on the knees. Like, what are with these boxers? You got Rocky running the streets of Philly and Chucks, and now this. I don't know, so we're gonna sip on this, walk home, because we did the six miles in well over 40 minutes. It was like an hour and a half. It's all about just doing it, guys. You know what I mean? So, I'm gonna go back and make a pretty bland breakfast. Yeah, I know. I need a toaster. You guys see what I'm saying? For someone with such an outspoken public persona, it's a pretty bland breakfast. We're like two strips of bacon away from making this an early bird special. So we got two pieces of toast, we got some eggs. So he didn't specify how he liked his eggs, but judging off his nine kids, he liked them fertilized. I just went with scrambled, and then we got some OJ. So, gonna go a little bit of egg. So you must be wondering, how did Muhammad Ali even get into boxing? Well, at the age of 12, Cassius, or Cassius, however you wanna say it, uh, that was his real name before he actually changed it legally to Muhammad Ali once he converted to Islam. Got his bike stolen, you know, and he was pissed off. He told the officer, you know, I'm gonna go beat the guy up. And the officer, Joe Martin, who actually just happened to be a boxing teacher, was like, dude, you should probably know how to fight before you try to beat someone up. So he said, I'll give you some lessons. Muhammad Ali took him up on that offer, started to box, and they quickly realized he had a talent for it. You know, it's in his DNA. One of his nine kids, Layla or Lila, I don't know how to pronounce these names today, but apparently she's a pro boxer, 24 0 record, so. Genetics, guys, genetics. Breakfast is done, it was great, tasted like I was at the holiday inn, but now it is time for some downtime. Now, my preferred method of downtime usually involves a red room, but Muhammad Ali, on the other hand, likes to watch TV, specifically his past fights like Thrilla in Manila and Rumble in the Jungle, so I can't really watch my old footage because just for YouTube purposes, so we're gonna watch some of his old fights and get some motivation for the workout.
So just ended up watching a bunch of the highlights from his past fights, and this guy can just throw absolutely mad bombs. And it was very clear he had more endurance and stamina than all the other fighters. He was constantly like moving his feet and jumping around, even like in like the 15th round, which is pretty incredible. So I am excited to go and train. All right guys, so we are headed to the gym right now. So Muhammad Ali would train six days a week, three hours at a time. So I'll put the workout on the screen right now. So as you guys can see, there's no weights. He would do calisthenics and obviously the boxing drills. So one of my buddies, Dylan, has been a Muay Thai boxing coach for the past 10 years. He actually competed and did 10 fights in the Philippines and in Thailand. So he's gonna take us through a workout today and try to cover some of the stuff on that workout list. All right guys, so we're here at the gym and look who it is. You guys might recognize him. He's my massage therapist, but he's also the trainer today. It's gonna take me through a workout. So you've been doing this for like 10 years, right? 10 years. Switch. Going down. Yeah. Once you hit that side, you're gonna to to switch to the left. Footwork is important because your feet are your foundation for your punches. If you're stepping and your feet are too close, you're gonna lose power. Yeah. When you're wide and you have a broad base, yeah. is when your power is gonna generate from your feet up to your hands, right? Here, step back, step across. Step up, step back, step across. You start jabbing <coughs> as you punch, so punch. So you wanna come on a straight line, ah. and then come back. Muhammad Ali would dedicate 10 to 20 minutes per workout with skipping. He's actually seen as one of the best skippers in boxing. So, are you a good skipper? You're gonna be here, and you're gonna come around, and then back. When you have bare feet and you skip, holy shit. Do you find that sometimes when you start skipping that you like start here and then you end up over there? Because it said that when he skipped, like you'd literally be like in like throughout the whole entire gym. Oh yeah. 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 Did you find that? Yeah, or no? you'll be like fucking everywhere. Right? Yeah? Step and go. Like that? Like, see how you went like this? Yeah. You actually want your right shoulder forward. Ah. So try going in the same spot. Keep your elbows tighter. All right, so what we're gonna do now is try um, the rope-a-dope, which is one of the things that uh, Muhammad Ali is famous for in his Rumble in the Jungle fight against George Foreman, when he kind of like put himself into the corner of the thing and just let George go to town on him and tired him out, and then afterwards just came and just completely knocked him out. So we're gonna let Dylan just go to town on me, tire him out, then I'm gonna knock him out. <laughs> oh. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> and that's Rumble in the Jungle, guys. That's how it happened. I didn't really feel much. Were you like, hitting me with a pillow or? Okay guys, so we just finished sparring and now we're gonna do a finisher on the heavy bag. So what do you got for me here? So we're gonna do a burnout called Tabata. So we're gonna go, 10 seconds on, uh, straights, hooks, uh, transitioning the whole time. Okay. And then we're gonna go last 10, we're gonna go burnouts, uh, power shots on the. On okay, the so 10 seconds each thing? Yeah. Good. Good. Speed. Good. I switch the hooks. Both sides, left leg. Left leg. Good. A little higher. Good. Good. And now back to straight. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and last time we're going to go power shots to the body. Left side and right. Good. Use your feet and turn. Good. 5 seconds. 4, 3, 2, and one. 
Yeah. Yeah. How long is that? A minute, minute, what? Three minutes. We don't have to spray the whole round. Let's do it. Okay, hey, wait, before we start, Muhammad Ali was actually famous for his trash talking. Yeah? You know? he, he would actually make up like lines and like lyrics, like that famous one, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Yeah, is that what you're gonna do right now? Yeah, you're gonna, you're, I'm gonna sting you like a bee. Is that bro. what's gonna happen? Yeah. And he called them ugly. So, you're ugly, man, you're ugly, man. Ouch. Jeez. Jeez, that's good. Let's go. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Tiring you up, man. <laughs> Welcome to my house, baby. That's what we do. <laughs> You actually got me nice there. <laughs> it's all strategy. <laughs> One thing he always did have was respect for anyone who even beat him too. Yeah. Even though he thought he was the greatest of all time, he actually probably was the greatest of all time. He was, he definitely was. He had respect for any time he lost. He was the first one to admit he's gotta get better, and that's what it's all about. That's a true athlete. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's gonna wrap up the boxing for today. I feel a little bit concussed, like I'm gonna vomit. <laughs> and luckily, after Muhammad Ali trains, he gets a massage and you know, he's the man. So he put his hands on me aggressively, and he put his hands on me. Uh, so, surely? Uh. Alright guys, so we are back from the gym. I am feeling sore as hell, but I'm hungry as hell, and it's lunchtime. So Layla Ali was not only the undefeated boxing champion, but she's also a very good cook, and one of her fondest memories of her dad is going for a burger. He absolutely loved burgers. He loved them so much that he actually opened up his own place called Champ Burger in 1968. So with that said, she actually made a burger dedicated to her dad called the greatest of all time. Uh, no offense, Layla, it doesn't seem to look like it's the greatest of all time, but again, you never really know. You can't judge it by its looks. You gotta wait till you put it in your mouth. You can learn a lot that way. So on this burger, there's not much going on. It's just cheese, mustard, and onion, and we're gonna see how it tastes. Okay, so for the patty, we need one and a half pounds of ground beef at room temperature. So this was sitting out for a little bit. And then we need one teaspoon of some onion powder. And then last but not least, this is already it. We need one and a half tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Good, and now we're gonna mix it all together and then put it on the pan. And once we put it on the pan, you season it up with salt and pepper. And then that is the patty. Greatest of all time burger taste test time. So on this burger, we only have American cheese, onion, and mustard. That was his favorite condiments on a burger. A little bit triggered that there's no pickle. Not much going on in the patty, but I love it when the meat takes charge. It has like a fast food quality to it. I underestimated this patty since there's not much going on, but like a good powder, sometimes a burger is at its best when it's most simple and pure. This was phenomenal. Don't want it to be done, so last bite, worst bite. All right, guys, so I'm gonna give this burger around like an eight out of 10. It was pretty good, I'd recommend it, considering it took so quick to make. So we're gonna go get out of these gym clothes. Katie's coming over pretty soon. We got a little bit of a surprise for her. 
So not only was Muhammad Ali a poet inside the ring with his trash talk, he was also a poet outside the ring. He had a massive influence in hip hop and he actually was even a Grammy nominated musician. So with that said, you know, Katie's coming over soon and I thought it'd be kind of fitting to write her a poem. And while I read her that poem, I'm gonna make her a drink because while you get serenaded, you just need something to sip on. So the drink that we are gonna be making is some homemade orange juice. This seemed to be his favorite drink. He drank it throughout the day and actually when he won a fight, he would go home and celebrate by having a big glass of orange juice with his friends and he'd actually still go to bed at regular hours, which is pretty insane. So. Let's get juicing. I swear I had oranges. Now let's get juicing. They all do the same thing. All right, so we have juiced all of the oranges and this is what we have left over here. Anyways, we're gonna put this in the fridge and then I'm gonna go write the poem. All right, so I just wrapped up the poem. It was actually very fun writing this. It's, it's actually very sweet, but also at the same time, extremely weird. So I have no idea how she's gonna actually respond to this, but hopefully the, the drink kind of offsets it. Okay guys, so I'm here with my beautiful girlfriend, Caitlin, and I have a little bit of a surprise for you. Cool. Do you have any idea what it could be? Chocolate? No, we what? don't have chocolate here. I made you some homemade juice. Cool. And I wrote her, I wrote you a poem. No way. Yeah. So I'm gonna go get that for you. I'm also gonna go get the drinks. And I also got us some some bubbly, you know, to really set the mood. Yeah. Yeah. It's virgin. Have you tried this one? No. Never? You didn't you didn't pretend to get bliss as a kid? No. Ooh. Wow, tastes like grapefruit. Needs a little bit more experience. I mean, I'm getting really nervous. <sighs> it started like a dream, finally coming true. A movie scene, my eyes settled on you. <laughs> As you looked at me, I was so thrilled. Like a Boston cream, my pants soon filled. 10 seconds later, you said hello. I lost control and had to go. Very confused, you asked me why. No explanation that I could try. Too soon to tell you. After nuts, I cry. What do you think? That was beautiful. Really? Yeah. I want that every night before I go to bed. You want this? I want you to read that to me. All right, we'll yeah. do yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so that was my poem with Katie. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. So that is that, and it's just about dinner time. So what we're gonna go do is make Muhammad Ali's favorite dish of all time. All right guys, so if you search online, what is Muhammad Ali's favorite dish, you will see he likes good old stick to your ribs soul food. So the dish is some baked chicken with some mac and cheese, so I'm with some white cheddar KD. The best flavor, original is pretty overrated. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below with some spinach and some green peas. Quick little pro tip for you guys trying to bake chicken, you don't want to have anything that's too high in calories like in the marinade, is to just use some zesty, fat-free Italian dressing. It is super good. Put it on your chicken, put it into the oven, it's incredible. So as you guys can see, I'm rocking the Sully's Boxing Gym t-shirt here. This is actually the oldest boxing gym in all of Toronto. And it was just kind of fitting with the video and actually fun fact, Muhammad Ali trained here a few times, pretty cool. So a lot of people seem to think that Kraft Dinner is an unhealthy food and just see it as like a, a bad food, but it's actually not that bad and the macros are not that bad. So for one serving that's prepared is 220 calories and that's if you put the butter and if you use full fat milk. So I usually just use cashew milk, of course the cheese, and you do not need to use the butter. Like honestly, not putting in the butter, you will not notice the difference. Like my dad that I do have, uh, loves mac and cheese, and I've actually made it for him a few times where I didn't put the butter and he had no idea. Whenever you have mac and cheese and you don't eat it out of the actual thing that you cooked it in, what are you even doing? All right, so let's dive into this nice soul food meal. So I mean, for being his favorite dish, it's actually pretty healthy and well-balanced. You got the chicken for the protein, you got your greens, you got the spinach to keep your forearms big during pre-fight celibacy, and then you got the mac and cheese for childhood nostalgia. I mean, my favorite dish would be just a bunch of junk food. Like my, my death row meal would not have a green in sight. So let's get a nice little threesome in my mouth. 
Well, I'll be damned, man. That is a good dish. That's a good, hearty, down-home dish. Like, just when I think of soul food, I just think of, I think of grandmas. I think of older women. Oh, that's not edible. Finger looking good, that was delicious. Definitely warms the soul. So I'm gonna go clean up the kitchen and then go do something that both of us have in common. Just on a little bit of a walk right now. So Muhammad Ali would like to go for a walk every single night after dinner, which I think is great. You know, he was the best at what he did and a lot of his days revolved around training for his career, but he never forgot about the most important thing, which is himself. You know, a lot of people give 100% at whatever it is that they're doing without focusing on their mental well-being and all that does is it it just creates problems so it's nice to see that he spent some time to himself focused on his inner well-being because i think that positively translated to just a better more successful career just got out of the shower and now it's time to pray for the second time today so i enjoyed the praying a lot more than i thought i was going to i kind of just used that time to reflect on what i'm thankful for and send positive vibes to my friends and family and instantaneously after i did that i felt just i felt really good and i was just in a positive mindset and i had just had a really good mood so it might be something that i might like implement into my daily routine and make it a habit just not at 4 30 in the morning All right, well, I am gonna wrap up the video here. So a lot of us see Muhammad Ali as just being the boxer, but there was so much more to him. He was such an incredibly inspiring human being that left a legacy behind. It was such an honor being able to do this tribute for him. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.